nature not I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things and I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case open and shut no doubt about it I'm a nature nut today we'll go bird watching tomorrow we'll catch toads the next day we'll take photographs of bugs along the road I never get the feeling that I'm in a rut that's why I'm a nature nut Well, I'm a nature nut I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things And I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case Open and shut No doubt about it I'm a nature nut You know, things aren't always The way they appear to be and I gotta tell you, that's the way it is with lagomorphs. You know what I'm talking when I say the word lagomorph? I'm talking about rabbits. I'm talking about hares. I'm talking about pikas, those cute little guys running around on boulders up on hillsides in the mountains. You gotta like pikas. That's what we're gonna talk about today. But before we get started, I gotta remind you, lagomorphs are not rodents, okay? This is a big confusion. Causes a lot of people a lot of problems. Lagomorphs are not rodents. Got some skulls here. We're gonna have a look, clear up this little problem right away. There's a typical rodent skull. Cute little feller, you gotta admit. See those cutting teeth on the front of the jaw? Incisors, there's two, count them. One, two, two incisors. That's what you got on the front of the top of the jaw of your basic rodent skull. Now, Look at that, another little cutie. Looks the same, this is a lagomorph. This is a snowshoe hare. Look at the incisors. Looks like two, but look at the back of them there. You see them? You see those little extra incisors hiding in behind? Yeah, there's four. That means this is a lagomorph, it's not a rodent, they're not closely related, two separate kinds of things. Get confused, pry their mouth open, have a look inside, dispel your ignorance. Let me remind you again, don't judge a book by its cover. Things are not always what they appear to be. Now let's go looking for lagomorphs. The oldest fossil lagomorphs are about 50 million years old, the same as the oldest rodents. You know, it's not generally all that difficult finding lagomorphs. This is where I like to have my breakfast in the morning, and most of the time, I can count on a snowshoe hare showing up somewhere around 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. Now the snowshoe hare is the most common sort of lagomorph in my part of the world, in central Alberta. It also goes by the name snowshoe rabbit, and we'll come back to the difference between hares and rabbits a bit later. And it's also called a varying hare. Now I've been trying to get pictures of these things for you because you know you never see them when you've got the TV camera. I did get a little bit of footage on my home video. And you'll notice that basically a snowshoe hare is just a regular rabbity looking critter. Very attractive, a nice sort of a even brown color. And they're called snowshoe hares because in the, uh, in the winter, their feet get really fuzzy and that gives them larger feet than they would otherwise have. And large feet allows them to walk more easily on top of the snow. It spreads their weight out and distributes the weight um, more evenly on a greater surface area. Very cool. That's what snowshoes do too. Uh, they're called varying hares because they vary in color from season to season. At this time of year, they're a beautiful uh, brownish color. They match the soil of the forest floor very nicely. In winter, they, uh, they shed their fur and they regrow a new uh, pelage. You call it a pelage. On a bird, it's a plumage. On a mammal, it's a pelage. And they grow white fur and they turn white with little tips, black tips on their ears. Very cute, very cute things indeed. Anyway, there you have it. The snowshoe hair, very cool thing. Excellent thing, in fact. Now, you might be laughing at my snowshoes, but let me tell you. It's August already, and often winter comes early in this part of the world. 
I'm ready for it. Got my snowshoes, got my porridge. You watch. Okay, so everybody comfortable? Okay, so here's here's a good one I heard the other day. So what do you call it when you got a whole row of rabbits all together and they're walking backwards across the prairie side by each? It's a receding hairline. <laughs> yeah, hair today gone tomorrow is what they often say. Okay, well now let's talk about the difference between rabbits and hares. Now, I know you might think this is just two names for the same thing. Apparently it's not, but you gotta admit, they look an awful lot like each other. Uh, but you know, it really is a profound difference. There are four things you look for. For one thing, Real rabbits are actually generally smaller than hares, and they've got smaller ears and shorter legs. Secondly, baby rabbits are born hairy and ready to go. Baby hares are born all naked and wiggly, like baby people. Uh, rabbits generally don't have black tips on their ears, and hares generally do. And rabbits don't change color in the winter, and some hares can change color they turn white to match the snow. Well, exactly. And the cottontail rabbit is about as good an example of a real, true rabbit as I can think of. I love cottontail rabbits. Now, rabbits, of course, uh, in this case, members of the genus Sylvilligus, as opposed to the genus Lepus. We got that all cleared up. And uh, around here, well, you see the cottontails. We're in the uh, Badlands right now of Dinosaur Provincial Park, and pff, cottontails, they, some sorts of cottontails live in these kinds of dry environments. You know, they come out in the evening, graze on the grasses and so on. You sometimes see them in wet environments. They're cute little things with very short ears, and you really don't find them much further north than this, because, of course, if they did live further north than this, they would uh, encounter much snowier winters. There's usually not a lot of snow down here, and so they can still blend into the gray-brown rocks. When they get into the snowy zone, hmm, that's when it's handy to be a hare, because then you can change white. Of course, well, hey, I'm not gonna get confused about that anymore, and in fact, I'm so keen on the topic now, I wanna go looking for hares and rabbits. I don't know about you. Well, I was of uh, two minds about that, but now I think I'll just hop on down the bunny trail. There are 23 species of rabbits alive today and 24 species of hares. Of course, hares are just technically members of the genus Lepus. Lepus, L-E-P-U-S. It's a Latin word or a Latinized word. Hey, I don't know. And it means exactly what you think it means. It means lepus. And of course, jackrabbits, being hares, they're longer legged than snowshoe hares or cottontail rabbits, and those long legs give them longer lever lengths, which allow them to make bigger leaps. <sighs> yep. And you know, these uh, jackrabbits, they're not just doing the frog type jumping that I'm doing. They actually put one leap after another and they get a sort of a gallop going. And a fast jackrabbit can go almost as fast as a pronghorn, which is the fastest animal, land animal in North America. The reason they're so fast is because they all evolved alongside predators that were even faster. Now extinct predators like the North American cheetah. You got a cheetah on your tail, you better be able to leap us. <sighs> and by the way, the jackrabbits we've been looking at here are white-tailed jackrabbits. Further south, you get the black-tailed jackrabbits, the antelope jackrabbits with even longer legs, even bigger ears, even more jackrabbity looking. The biggest lagomorph alive today is probably a large domestic rabbit weighing about 7 kilograms or 15 pounds. 
Yes, and you know they say if you eat more carrots, it improves your eyesight, which is really quite a remarkable thing. Now, I think we're getting, I think we're making very good progress with you, and right now I'm gonna show you just a few little ink blob drawings. You tell me what you think they look like. Have a close look at that. A carrot, a carrot, well, yes. I suppose some people might see a carrot in that. That's very interesting, I'll make a note of that. We should, uh, while we're doing this, we should review what we know about you so far. Your name is Bunny and you're, you're a domestic bunny. Technically, you're a kind of a rabbit and not a hare. And, uh, and you and your ancestors have been domesticated for many hundreds of years. At least that's the belief that we're, that we're working with here today. And this, this is uh, a cabbage, a cabbage, you say. That's a cabbage, yes, that's right. And uh, and everything's going fairly well for you at, at home, except for the fact that you have a few tension points with your owners. You can't seem to come to terms with what we call house training. This is simply beyond your abilities. Would you like to look at this one while we're thinking about this? And and secondly, you have these episodes where you're sitting quite peacefully in the, in the living room with your with your owners, and then you run around the room rather spasmodically and jumping in the air and kicking your legs and kicking things off the wall. This is a problem for you because because your owners expect you to behave more like a dog or like a cat. Well, this is this is perfectly normal. We've seen this many, many times, and even the great Sigmund Bunno was was unable to uh, to make rabbits into dogs and cats. He called it the dog and cat complex, and it's a fairly it's a fairly uh, involved thing. The goal, really, for us should be to allow you to be a bunny, to to revel in your bunniness, to to express bunnytude without reservation, and to simply find happiness as yourself. And if that means leaving a few pellets around the living room or or jumping around from time to time, that's fine. That's fine with fine with me, and it's true to your nature. I, I uh, what, this was a. Uh, Another bunny, you said. Yes, well, that's, I think we're making excellent progress. Excellent progress. But our time is up here today. So what I'll do is I'll just take you to the front and they accept checks and all the major credit cards. And oh, now don't don't let the, the, the old, old habit come back. You know, we want to continue to make progress here. And that's all right. Uh, why don't rabbits ever get divorced? Well, oh, that's because they can't stand splitting hairs. <laughs> and when they go out in the backyard and they water the lawn, sometimes they turn on the faucet and hold on to the other end of the hose and all these little bunnies come out. Nothing but bunnies, millions of little tiny ones. That's called a hairspray. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I don't know that when they get tired of that, they all put on their best clothes and go away off in the bushes and they play music and dance around with one another. And and uh, just have a regular hairball. <laughs> yeah. Reproduction. Now you really can't talk about rabbits without talking about reproduction because rabbits have a fearsome reputation for being able to reproduce more so than just about any other kind of animal. But we really should get to the factual basis of this and do some comparisons. Let's start with an animal like, well, a fox, a red fox, regular old fox. In one season, you take the parent foxes and their babies and you get 10 foxes. It's not bad. Now, in the same amount of time, you take one pair of rabbits and they are gonna produce 850 rabbits. And of course that's, well, that's a lot of rabbits. Now, on the other hand, if you had a pair of rats and you gave them the same amount of time, they would produce, get this, 46,822 rats. Yeah. 
That's a lot of rats. So you get the point. When it comes to reproduction, rabbits are mere amateurs. They're not even in the big leagues, and we haven't even started talking about bugs or fishes. You know, a giant mola ocean sunfish, single female, lay 300 million eggs at once. Those eggs, if everyone survived, would grow into 270 million tons of giant mola ocean sunfish. So take her easy on the rabbits. They're nowhere near as guilty as many others. What do you call a rabbit with three ears instead of just the regular two? Uh, you still call it a rabbit, you just don't gotta call it quite as loud. <laughs> <laughs> the Mexican volcano rabbit is an endangered species and one of the rarest lagomorphs on Earth. some habit. just in the bush back here and I found these very common signs of the lagomorph order of mammals those are rabbit pellets and in this case they've come from a cottontail rabbit if they came from another sort of a rabbit or a hare they might be a bit bigger but very typical rabbit pellets and I'm sure most of you have seen those before what can I tell you about rabbit pellets well basically they are rabbit poop but as poop goes pretty inoffensive. I mean, they don't smell very much. They're quite dry. And they are quite clearly composed of partially digested, chewed up plant material. A very interesting thing about lagomorphs is that they also produce a different kind of a pellet. And once they've pooped out the second kind of pellet, they just turn around and eat it. And, you know, that may seem revulsive to us, but it comes back to the similarities between lagomorphs on the one hand and grazing animals like ungulates on the other hand. You know how cows chew their cud. They regurgitate part of their last meal and they chew it again and then they re-swallow it, passing it through at least the first part of their digestive system twice to get more out of, the, uh, of this low quality food. 
that they're eating and grass is really quite a low quality food. I suppose if we, uh, if we were rabbits, I'd be sitting here making fun of animals that only digest their food once. These are little bits of chocolate, by the way. And you knew that all along, didn't you? Trail food. How come you never see a hare sitting around fretting and worrying about everything when so often you see a rabbit stew? How come you're not laughing? You're acting like a bunch of cardboard cutouts. You laugh at the next one or I'm gonna sue you for harassment. Get it? Harassment. <laughs> bunch of cottontails. When rabbits and hares are introduced where they are not native, they often become terrible pests. Okay, well before we leave the topic of lagomorphs, there's one more thing I want to discuss, and that's these things right here. You know what I'm talking about. This is a lucky rabbit's foot. And the weird thing is, it really is a rabbit's foot. It's a real rabbit's foot that's been sawed off a rabbit and dried up and dyed pink and put on a keychain. If you feel it, you can feel the little shriveled up rabbit bones inside. Woof! That's gruesome! I don't believe in luck. For me, I'd prefer that rabbit's foot to be on the, uh, you know, end of a rabbit leg. I don't know what happened to the rest of the rabbit. Haas and Pfeffer, I guess. Anyway, that's just my opinion. That's because I'm a nature nut, and I hope you are too. We'll see you again real soon. Bye for now. Yeah, there's a couple of rabbit foots. Hi, Hoppy. Hi, Boppy. Say, what kind of carrots do you like best? I like the orange ones. Oh, me too. Yeah, oh yeah, no, they're definitely the best. Yeah, sure, well, let's go see if we can find some. Okay, let's go this way. Same time each and every week, uncensored and uncut. No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut. <laughs>